Now that we got the boom swung into place, we have to get the cab tilted up. Uh, there's a couple of steps to do that. So it sits in there or you can keep your crane on there and use this as a safety. Pretty sure there's no water in that hole. I don't see any rust on the glow plug. Get it free and clear of water so we can put this thing back together and try and start it. Welcome to Surface Call, a mechanics guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. And on this episode, we're going to try and start it. Originally, the sight glass was over full. Now we're right off the sight glass. We're going to close the window here. To easily and quickly book a mechanic, visit tecamohd.com. We're going to just bump it over a couple of times, on off, on off with the key, just in case there is water in there, because right now I'm still flabbergasted, no water came out. And then after we do that a few times, we can start to turn it over more, and then we can actually hold the starter over and let it just sit there and turn over. And if any water's in those holes, it's going to push them out the glow plug holes and get it free and clear of water so we can put this thing back together and try and start it. It definitely looks like we got some water out of there. Some oily water that was in the cylinders. So that tells me that there was water in there. Good thing that we pulled all the glow plugs out. It uh, sprays out, kind of makes a bit of a mess. So now what we want to do is we're going to put the glow plugs back together. We're going to put all the fuel lines. We're going to put the engine back together. Now in a diesel engine, the piston has a dish inside of it. There's no way to get the water out of that dish, but we know that we're good enough to be able to put the machine back together and turn it over with the compression. There isn't enough water in there to stop it from the piston from coming all the way up so it won't bend a connecting rod and then hopefully it'll fire up. When it fires up we'll probably see quite a bit of smoke and steam and stuff coming out of the exhaust. That's it burning off any excess water that's in there, anything that's kind of sitting in there and, and getting it out of the engine. So we'll start by plugging the injection pump back in so we don't forget to later. It's plugged in and I'm going to jump up top. I'm going to put some glow plugs back in and put the uh, power rail back on and continue on. So to start, I'll just drop the uh, glow plugs in. Thanks for all the support so far, especially on this service call series. We love hearing feedback from the community. And if there's anything you'd like to see, be sure to let us know in the comments. Wind them in as far as I can by hand. Then we'll feed this power rail back in. Now this wire is slotted. We have to hold the wire in as we tighten up this nut. Sometimes it can be a little bit difficult. There's a ratchet, tighten them up. These don't have to be too, too terribly tight. They're just little studs. Now the glow plugs are in, power is hooked up, power rails on. Next, we're gonna put the fuel lines back in. Now, because these fuel lines are empty of fuel, we're gonna tighten up the injection pump side, but we're not gonna tighten up the injector side. We gotta bleed the air out of these fuel lines now. So if we leave these loose and then we turn the engine over until we get fuel squirting out of them, then we know that there's no more air in the, in the fuel lines. Put the clamp back on for the crankcase breather tube here. 
I put the coolant lines for the EGR back on. So I'll go to the other side here and do the uh, injection pump fuel lines. It works best if you have a partner, you can get them in the cab on the key, turn over the engine. You can watch the, the fuel lines here until you get good fuel coming out of the fuel lines. Then you can ask them to stop and you can tighten them up. Turn the key on to on, let it, uh, the dash and everything cycle and turn on first. Whenever you're ready. So a little bit of air come out here. Starting to see fuel out of these two and the third one is just starting. Hold it. So we know we've got good fuel coming out of these two. I'm gonna tighten them up so it stops making a mess and squirting on me. And we'll give this one a little bit more. Go ahead. Yep. We've got fuel there. Now, this thing might take a little bit to get started. Might be a little bit of water in the holes still. Might be a tiny bit of air through the system somewhere still. But we're gonna do our best to uh, start it up now. We're gonna try and start it. And now you can see all the water that came out of the exhaust is still streaming out of the exhaust over here. You want to let it warm up a little bit. Make sure you don't hear any funny noises. Everything sounds good. We don't have any fuel leaks. You can start to see the steam coming out of the exhaust now. That's all the water burning off that's in the exhaust, the muffler. I pull my tools off of here. Now the machine's running so they don't vibrate off, land somewhere. Make sure there's no warnings on the dashboard or anything. No buzzers going off. We do have a battery light that's on, so we're probably not charging. Now the alternator was underwater, so I'm not surprised. The connections don't look the greatest. I'll show you here. You can see it's all rusty. The inside of the alternator probably doesn't look any different than that. So we're probably looking at replacing an alternator. If you'd like to see how we replace the alternator, be sure to check the link in the description. What we can do to verify though, is get a test light. And now we don't want to go to the nut, we want to go to the terminal here. Now remember, this is power. So if I'm touching this part and I touch there, I'm creating a ground for the power. So we're going to see if there's any power here at all. We have 12 volts only. It should be reading up to a 14 volts, around 14 volts is where we should see this. So we know that this alternator is not charging. Originally the sight glass was over full. Now we're right off the sight glass. So that's what I was saying when I said, it's okay, we know that we're just barely over the sight glass because it's gonna go down. It's okay if it goes a little bit up because we know once we fire it up, it's gonna suck down a little bit but we knew we were safe to start it because there was more than enough hydraulic oil in it to start it. There's no hydraulic oil pissing out, so we know that we're not losing the oil. It just went back into the system, filled the, the hydraulic reservoir, filled the air that was in the thumb cylinder, so on and so forth. Now we're gonna drop this cab back down. We, in order to do so, I've got to lift it up a bit to get the safety bar down. You have to lift the safety bar up a little bit and then you can fold it back and then push it forwards. Pulling it, pushing it forwards stops it from being able to go up. And then now we can lower this cab all the way back down. I know we opened and closed the door a few times. We wanna make sure this door is closed or it may bind on parts back here as it goes down. I'm gonna fire this machine up again. I'm gonna run all the hydraulic functions, make sure everything functions properly, moves properly and uh, go from there. So it looks to me like all the hydraulic functions are working properly. We're gonna put this in the check oil position, top up the hydraulic oil. We're gonna check the throttle. 
throttle works well. Can't check the uh, the windshield wiper. Actually, we can. We'll lower the uh, the windshield. Windshield wiper works. We're gonna check uh, the heater. Make sure the fan is working. A little bit of steam coming out. We'll leave that on high and on hot. Steaming up this cab here. It's nice and warm. We're gonna check the air conditioning right now. So we're gonna turn it on cold. Turn the AC on. Right away it starts blowing cold air, so we know the AC is working. I put it back on hot again. And blow all the steam out of this thing. Looks like that's most of it is gone now. I'm just pushing the different buttons on the dash, the power button, the auto idle. We're gonna see if that works. doesn't seem to be working. I'm hoping that it's because the voltage and the battery is a little bit low. Seems like everything seems to be working. I'm going to check the horn. It works. The menus all work. The display works. Everything works here. Okay, now we're going to bolt the cab back down. So we got to put these three bolts back here in the back. I'm going to close the window here. Okay, we're going to put the little panel on up front here. Slide it in. Two bolts. Get the gun on one of them. And a ratchet wrench for the other. And then we're going to put the glass back in the front. A little bit tight being such a new machine here. Slide it all the way down, make sure it's pushed all the way down. Or when we close this top window, it can hit the top of this glass and it can break the glass. We'll close the top window here. And now the cab's bolted back down. And that's how you go through a machine after it's been submerged in water and get it back up and running safely without doing any damage. So throughout the process of this machine, we had to get the water out of all the fluids out of the engine to make sure it's safe to put power to, make sure it's safe to start without doing any damage. And then we can put this machine back in service. So the first thing we did was get the water and contaminants out of the engine oil. We saw some water in there. Then we drained the hydraulic oil, saw some water in there. And we also did the fuel, saw some water in there as well. So it's a good thing we drained all those fluids, filled them up, cleaned everything up. After we did that, we pulled out the glow plugs and we turned the engine over to get any water that was in the engine out. I'm surprised we didn't see more water in there. There was definitely some, but I've done some machines where just streams of water come out. So we got lucky on that aspect. Once we got it running, you could see the exhaust was full of water because it was coming out the exhaust, landing on the ground. After we got the machine running, we checked the alternator wasn't charging. We changed the alternator, got it charging again. Uh, we checked all the other electronics, uh, the lights, the wiper, the heater, everything. And when we got the heater on, you could see the steam coming out of the heater. So that was drying up nicely. All the electronics are working now. We checked all the hydraulics. They're all working now. This machine, after we put a couple of panels on here, is ready to go back into service. To support this channel, can you please like, subscribe, and comment? Need parts for your machine? Be sure to visit PortisHD.com. To easily and quickly book a mechanic, visit TecamoHD.com. Thanks for all the support so far, especially on this service call series. We love hearing feedback from the community. 
And if there's anything you'd like to see, be sure to let us know in the comments.